Hello and welcome to this episode in our scanning series. Today I'm going to be talking about scanning your collection of photographs, whether they're slides, negatives or colour transparencies. I'm often asked what is the best way to scan a large collection. Well today I'm going to show you how to do batch scanning using a flatbed scanner. So let's take a look at this. So for this tutorial I'm going to be using a flatbed scanner. In fact we're going to use the Epson V750 and do our batch scanning list. But we need to prepare the scanner first. And as I've been doing some reflective scanning I need to take off the transparency hood cover here. So now we can have the complete transparency hood ready for scanning film. And the other thing we need to do is actually make sure that you give the scanner surface a really good clean, remove as many dust particles and fingerprints from the surfaces and also don't forget the transparency cover as well. So to clean the glass surface we can use a soft cloth and the one I found quite good is actually this TV plasma LCD screen cleaner. It doesn't scratch the surface, nice and soft and it's easy to use. And when you've cleaned out make sure you remove all the dust and we've got a really good dust off blower here. So that's cleared off all the dust. So for this batch scanning exercise I'm going to load up the entire transparency holder with transparency so I can actually hold 12 pictures in here. But as you notice I've actually loaded up all the photographs in the horizontal orientation regardless of whether the photographs have been taken as portrait modes or landscape mode. So we'll just load up each one of these in here and I'll show you the reason why I've done this in a moment. There we go. Let's make sure they're nice and square. And the next stage is to actually give the slides a little bit of a clean off. Let's remove any dust and I'm using some aerosol air cleaner for this and that should remove even the most stubborn dust and don't forget to do the other side as well. This will save you hours of retouching work. Okay and now we're ready to place this on the flatbed scanner. And make sure they go in there. And now we're ready to scan in the pictures. Having now launched Silverfast AI Studio, the first thing we want to do is create a preview of these images that are on the flatbed. So let's look at the general tab and we'll select normal for the time being. And our original, well we've actually got transparencies. So let's select transparency. And now we can click on the pre-scan button. And this will generate a preview of all the transparencies there. So now we have 12 transparencies on the flatbed surface and we can try one of two ways to select these. If we look at this icon here, this finds image frames. Now this doesn't always work and as you can see there's a couple of them that have not quite given the results we want. It's a little bit skew with. So I don't particularly want that one. So let's just delete all the frames. The way we can do it now is to actually select each individual frame. So we'll select one frame there and then we'll select the next frame and we go through the entire process of this. Now there is an actually easier way of doing this. Um, what I would suggest is actually to predefine all the selections. So if we're going to select say this image here, we can zoom in on the image and see a preview of the image. and here we have the preview and now we can bring in our selection frame to a very precise setting and allow a little bit of border around the picture just in case something's not quite sitting in square and there we have our selection there and we can zoom back out again and we can do this for every single slide so we make our next selection and then we zoom in on the picture so as you can see this will take time to actually generate each individual frame and there's no quick way around this but I can show you a time-saving technique so there we go we've selected that one 
as well. And what I would suggest you do is go around each of the 12 slides and make the selection exactly the same way as I've just done them. And then once you've made that selection, you can save the frame set. Now I've already predefined the frame set as 35mm slide frames. And here they are. They're all perfectly lined up. Now the reason earlier on I told you to put everything in the horizontal format is that we've defined everything for a horizontal frame. So now when we come to do our final scan everything will be perfectly in place. But what about pictures that are actually rotated in a wrong orientation? Well if we look at our densitometer you can see a little preview of the window. So now all we need to do is actually click on there. So this is now showing us how the photograph will come into your application. So if I scan this one in, it's actually going to come in as an upright picture. So you can actually define this. But my own preference, leave everything in the horizontal mode and then change your orientation in your image editing application. So now, what about the scanning order? Well, if we click on this button here, click and hold, it shows the numbers apply to every single image frame there, showing you which order they're going to be done in. So the bottom right hand corner is going to be the first one to be scanned, and number two is actually top right hand corner, three, four, etc. So if I click on number f this first one here, and then click on the button again, then we can sort left to right, top to bottom. So click on there, so there we go, one, two, three, four, five. So it's now in, in the scan order from. Regarding resolution, we need to go to the center tab frame here, and we can set our resolution for each one of the frames here. So I've got this one set at 228 dpi. For 35 millimeter scans, you should actually work at your scanner's optical resolution. For this particular scanner, it's going to give me the best results of 3200 dpi. So now you can see it's going to give me a 39.29 megabyte file. And each transparency can have its own values allocated to them. Well, at the moment, I only want to do these as thumbnail scans. So I'm going to stick to 228. So I'll just type in 228. DPI and that should be sufficient to give me a small thumbnail preview of all my pictures there. Anything after that I will scan in at full resolution if I like the look of it. So now how do we batch scan these? Well we go back to the general frame and we look at scan mode. In normal mode it's just going to scan in one image directly into your image editing application. We can have batch mode which now is going to scan every image and bring that into your image editing application. Now if you're scanning in a high re resolution then it's going to be 40 megabytes for each file so there's a lot of memory being used there. My advice is to actually use the batch mode and scan to file. So if we scan to file there and now we press the scan button we get a dialog in there and we are asked what type of file do we want to save it as. We can save it as TIFF, JPEG, PDF, JPEG 2000 or EPS. Um, so I'm going to save them as TIFF. This is a lossless format so you can maintain all the details. Um, you can give your f slides a unique name, so a batch name. So if this was your holiday 2008 we would type in holes 2008 and then we can have a two digit or however many digit numbers you want, say three digit number. So if we give this one holiday 2008, we can see that holiday 2008 number 13 and that will just increment the numbers accordingly. So, And you just press the scan button and it will do it for you.